Sorry, let me get settled in here. What? What's sure, that? Alright, what's going on? I'm just going to ask you to wear a mask. Alright, I told you guys I'm not wearing a mask. I know that. And okay. It's been so I'm not wearing a mask. I don't care. Governor? Okay, then I'm going to ask if, you to it leave. Doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's a public health issue. Okay, I'm the reason why... Okay. Okay. Alright. Um, right now, because you're not allowed to be in work without a mask. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Yep. So am I being terminated? You're not being terminated. You're being asked to leave until you return wearing a mask. Okay, if I never return wearing a mask, then what? Am I just indefinitely suspended? Be, we'll go down the road of corrective action, up to and including termination. So how long, like how long do I have to wait for that? How long do I have to wait for that? I told you. How long do I have to wait to find out if I'm going to be fired or not? That depends on your reaction. I'm not going to ever wear a mask. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand what Okay, you're so then how long will it then take? I'll refer the matter to human resources. And how long will it take? That depends on the human resources. Fine. Just will you keep me posted? Of course I'll keep you posted. Thanks. Either. All right, so um, today, well, actually, a couple days, Saturday, maybe, when I think it was last Saturday, uh, I sent a letter to my supervisor that hired me, letting her know my feelings towards the mask issue, and that I don't feel that it's good for my health, and I don't agree with it religiously, and also I have free political speech, and I just listed all the facts and all the reasons why I have a problem with it. And then I actually footnoted it. It was a three-page letter. I might include it here. And anyway, so I never received a response from my supervisor. She just kicked it up a notch. And then Mr. Day, uh, I'll figure out what his official position is with Granite School District. He wrote me back and he said, you know, here's all the you know, illegal reasons, well, you know, not to him, all the, all the legal reasons why, you know, you must wear a mask and I will see you at 8 a.m. on Wednesday with a mask on, you know, uh, which is pretty forceful. I mean, that's not, uh, anyway, so I responded to him and I told him that I would, you know, be to work on Wednesday morning, you know, as I'm as contracted to do and I won't have a mask on. So anyway, um, through the wisdom of God, I had a feeling that this was more of a power issue than a uh, concern over public health and that they would, you know, be heavy handed in their approach at um, letting me go. He also said in the, in the letter, in the email that um, I would be asked to leave and sent home and uh, that, would be, that I would be sent home without pay. Um, and so anyway. So I, I, I took my motorcycle to work today, and as I'm rolling in, uh, there's a police truck with a police officer, and then there's two uh, guys, Mr. Day being one of them, I, I assume. Um, I didn't get his name because everything happened so fast. And uh, they're all masked and waiting for me. So I went and pulled around where I normally park on the, on the side of the building, and uh, I thought, since they were ambushing me, I thought maybe I would, you know, walk around the, the other side and go in, but then I just went ahead and, and went the direction that, that they were at to go to the door to enter. Um, I wish I'd have got all this on, on video, but unfortunately it all happened really, really fast and I just wanted to get into work. So, um, so as I, I have my motorcycle helmet on, uh, I'm walking up the stairs to buzz into the first door and 
this guy is like, you know, ambushing me. This Mr. Day, I think is, is who it was. And he's telling me that I have to put this mask on, which is ridiculous because I can't put a mask on over my helmet. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get through the door. I can't like take all my gear off right there to put a mask on. And besides, you know, arguably my ma my helmet is a form of a mask and it's arguably as effective as a, a cloth mask anyway. So the, again, this didn't really feel like a, a medical thing, like to protect uh, the people, you know, that I haven't even come in contact with yet. This just felt like more of a power or control issue of you will do what I say or, you know, you will not be here. So anyway, I, I got in, um, I, I got in and put my, you know, took my helmet off, set it on my desk, and then, uh, you know, as the video shows, uh, you know, he insists I put a mask on and I tell him that I already told him I wasn't putting a mask on and I was very clear about that in my letter. And then he says, well, you know, we ask you to leave and I don't know if they expected me to fight that or something. Maybe that's why the police were there, you know, but anyway, so yeah, I just, I just left and, uh, you know, got on my motorcycle and went home and they, of course, watched me leave to make sure I wouldn't, you know, sneak back in. I don't know what they think I was trying to do besides work. Um, you know, I put in, you know, really good work for this, uh, for this school district. I work as an audiology technician and, um, I've worked really hard for them for two years. I've done as good of a job as I could possibly do. I've um, personally, you know, helped give hearing conservation lectures to probably, I don't know, 40,000 kids. Um, I've screened a, a heck of a lot of kids and I, I just have done a really good job for them. And so it's just really sad that, you know, they act like this. So they wouldn't say they were firing me. Again, this, you know, the thing about, you know, pa people that have authority and, and abuse it is that they, they really like to make you kind of suffer. You know, they, they, they didn't give me enough time to even clean off my desk. And I, I don't, I don't, don't know if I mentioned it, but you know, I, I went in beforehand uh, yesterday and I, because I, I had the inkling they would do this and I, I, I took all my stuff home. So there was nothing for me to try and gather up. So I, I kind of beat them on that one. But, um, the, the whole quasi you're fired, but you're not fired. You're going to go home without pay indefinitely. And we may get back here. We may not, we, we don't know. And you know, all that, that's all just designed to be, you know, uh, disruptive to a person's financial situation. Uh, you know, unless they're truly trying to figure out how to make accommodations for me, which they aren't because I asked that in the letter and that was never mentioned. Like we're working on it or we'll see what we can do or we understand where you're coming from. It was all just like, you know, you'll wear a mask or, you know, you won't be here. So anyway, again, it just didn't feel like a health issue. Uh, it felt like a control issue. And, um, you know, as far as this whole mask thing goes, it's just, it's ridiculous. Uh, this is just a, it really is a means of control and, and, you know, people following these, these illegal orders, you know, it starts with, you know, you got to wear a mask and then it's, you got to get a forced vaccine and you got to get forced booster shots. And then next thing you know, you're getting a, an invisible tattoo with your vaccine record on it and some nanotech injected into you that, you know, alters your uh, genetic code and you know or it's here wear an armband here get on a train you know here take a chemical shower but you know it's always just these these people that follow these these illegal orders and they act like you know that's uh that's their job that's that's their ultimate duty no their ultimate duty ultimate duty is to do the right thing the ultimate duty is to stand up for freedom to stand up for constitutional law and for the the law of nature all that trumps illegal orders you know and if this is a you know, something that needs to go to court, then it should go to court, you know? And, but, um, as far as being a, being a health thing, it just didn't feel like it. Just none of it, none of this did. I mean, I, I was, I was barely in that building and, and I was back out, you know, didn't have a chance to breathe on anybody. And, you know, I, I have, uh, I know for a fact that I don't have COVID. Um, I was medically screened on Monday, uh, not specifically for COVID, but blood was drawn and I was, uh, you know, I, I'm told that I'll be notified if I have COVID and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have it. I'm not a pre-symptomatic carrier, but anyway, that's all, that's all a moot point. So anyway, I just wanted to capture this and I'll just post the video. Uh, I'll post, um, the letter that I sent and also I will post some links, uh, to uh, some really good documentaries. Uh, one of which I watched last night, it was absolute gold. Uh, it's called Plandemic Indoctrination and everybody should watch that. And everybody should really understand what's going on with our country. Um, 
and with this world, what's really happening. And you know, if you don't if you don't like the the sources that are reporting the information, do your own research. Go find a source that you do like. You know, this stuff is really happening, and it's there if you dig. But there are wicked and conspiring men that are uh, suppressing information and trying to manipulate us and social engineer us into not knowing what is going on. So uh, anyway, I I'm not quitting. Um, I want to do my job. Uh, they're not firing me. They're just putting me in some kind of you know, limbo or, uh, you know, some kind of, I don't know what the term is, but, you know, just some, some kind of waiting hell. And so and we'll find out what happens. All right. All right. So as an update, I just had uh, someone knocking on my door. My dog's going nuts. So I come upstairs to see who it is. And it's an officer of the law. And he hands me this paper that is hand delivered. And I had to sign that I hand, that it was hand delivered to me along with my um, along with the date and my birthday and my name, my name. So anyway, um, I'll just go ahead and read it. Uh, it says, well, actually I can, I'll post it too, but it just says August 19th, 2020, uh, Bryce and Jack audiology technician related services and my address, Mr. Jack, it has come to my attention that you were unwilling to wear a face mask while at work. This action is in direct violation of the state public health order and the governor's clarifying statement. Our school board and superintendent have stated all employees will comply with this order. Therefore, it is in the district's best interest to place you on administrative leave pending the outcome of an investigation. Ooh, they're gonna investigate and see if I was not wearing a mask. I mean, they're ridiculous, it's all on video. Anyway, you'll be contacted by Doug Larson, Director of Policy and Legal Services to discuss the status of this matter. Unless specifically directed, you are not to be on district property, okay, I can abide with that, or speak to students or staff members regarding this matter or any way that would interfere with the investigation. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm not supposed to go on to the property and talk to people? Or are they actually saying that I'm gagged and I can't actually like talk to people that I work with or students that might attend a granite school? If that's what they're saying, that's beyond the pill. And this investigation is ridiculous. What are they what, invest, what are they investigating? That I showed up to work for, I don't know, a couple minutes without a, a mask on, and then I left like, promptly when they told me to? I don't see what kind of investigation this is all about. But anyway, it says, if you violate this directive, you will be subject to a charge of trespass. Okay, does that mean, does that mean like retroactive that I, that I went there today, that that was trespass and I'll be charged with trespass? That's absurd because I was going to do my job and then I was asked to leave. And if I'm not going there from here on out, then how can they charge me with trespass? Any necessary communication regarding your job duties should be with Lynn Lar Larson Miller. That's my hiring supervisor who never responded during any of this. If you have any questions regarding this letter, you may contact my office at 385-646-4513. Sincerely, Leslie Bell. Leslie Bell is an assistant superintendent for the student learning and support. And then it was CC to Dr. Martin Bates, Superintendent, Doug Larson, Director, Policy and Legal Services, Dr. Bryce Day, Director, who I had dealings with today, Special Education, Lynn Larson Miller, Director of Related Services and Human Resource File. So anyway, uh, pretty official. I'm more confused than I was before about exactly what they're trying to do. Uh, again, doesn't feel like this is for my health, but uh, just wanted to document it.